Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 17 January 2017. Coming to you with a video tonight to kind of explain uh, how I do my consignment knife sales on the channel. Um, answer some FAQs and give you kind of the nuts and bolts of how that works in case you're interested in uh, turning over some of your collection. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the basic structure of the sale, um, how you get paid, how much you get paid, how we price the knives, all that stuff, how how the knives get to the customers. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about what doesn't sell, what does sell, and how to price your knives. <clears throat> so, these three knives are just sort of to keep your eyes occupied as we're talking. <clears throat> so let's go over first and excuse me if my sump pump kicks on during this video it's a little rainy in Indiana tonight um, <clears throat> here's how the sales work um, if you are a consigner and you would like to sell some knives um, just send me an email at rob.bixby65 at yahoo.com Start a conversation. Let me know what you'd like to sell. <clears throat> um, and here's how it works. You, the owner of the knives, are responsible for pricing them. Uh, I may give you some coaching, especially after, <laughs> as happens sometimes, you know, after you send me 10 knives and seven of them don't sell the first week, we'll probably have a discussion about pricing. But here's, here's my rule of thumb, my guideline for pricing. Price them to sell. You know, people watch these videos um, with the idea that they're going to get a deal on a knife. Uh, you know, if they're if it's a if it's a three year old paramilitary two, and you can buy them for one hundred eighteen dollars shipped at Blade HQ. Um, you know, don't send me a paramilitary two and put one hundred twenty five bucks on it because it's not going to sell. <clears throat> so price them to sell. And have your pricing make sense um, as uh, as it exists in the rest of the market. Um, your pricing should be shipped. So for most folding knives, even smaller fixed blade knives, seven dollars of your price is going to go to priority mail. I ship everything priority mail, usually in a small flat rate box or a padded envelope if it'll fit. Uh, how do I get paid? Well, I, I, I take a cut of your proceeds. So <clears throat> here's how that works. Uh, on knives for, uh, on knives $400 and under, um, I take 15% of the net selling price after postage is deducted. So if, you, if it sells for $200, Minus seven is 193. I take 15% of 193. Knives over $400, that percentage goes down to 10. On really inexpensive knives, like let's say a Cold Steel Mini Recon 1, um, I, I've had a couple lots, uh, batches of knives that, you know, let's say there were 15 knives and 10 of them were under 50 bucks. Well, I go crazy answering emails, boxing up knives, putting them in packages, mailing them. Um, you know, 15% of 20 bucks is $3. It's not, not worth it. So I have a $5 minimum per knife, my commission. Um, so, you know, you may work this out in your mind and think, well, it doesn't really much make much sense to send a a mini recon one that's used that's worth 25 bucks in for Rob to sell. Um, if it does, that's great, but it's five bucks minimum commission, five bucks per knife. The minimum commission for a batch that you send me is 50. So, you know, if, if you're right and you want to sell one knife that's worth a hundred bucks, I'm probably not interested in that. Um, just because, you know, there's a lot of time involved. Um, researching the knives, going over the uh, the consigner's pricing, making sure that it's in line, um, occasionally doing a little work on a knife, 
shooting a video, editing a video, um, uploading a video, and then the biggest time commitment is, you know, from from 10 o'clock at night till 1 o'clock in the morning, a constant uh, in and out of emails, answering questions, collecting money. It's, you know, an average knife sale that has 15 knives in it, I've probably got, I don't know, six or seven hours in that knife sale that, that you watch in 30 minutes. So, um, <clears throat> So why would you why would you send me knives? Well, because they almost always sell um, within reason. We'll get into what within reason means. So for the buyer, we try to make it a good value. For the consigner, we try to make it a quick way to cash your collection. Um, you're not going to get top dollar because you got to put them on the money and you got to pay me. But what you will get is no muss, no fuss. You send me a box of knives, you get money in your PayPal account. You don't have to worry about customer heat, confusion, um, guys saying they're going to buy knives and don't. You send me knives, you get money. Um, and, you know, my sale vids usually get a couple 3,000 views in the, the five or six days that they're up. And, um, you know, one time we sold 18 knives in 37 minutes. Um, so it does happen, okay? So let's talk a little bit about what sells and what doesn't sell, shall we? Let's get these off here. So first let's talk about what doesn't sell. <clears throat> what I'm going to say doesn't sell are, uh, I'm going to call them junk knives and obscure knives and knives that are in horrible condition. So this is a junk knife, okay? This is a uh, this is a shred, I think, from the 90s. It's a, you know, buy it with your Camel Miles knife. It's a really, really nasty little liner lock and a slip joint kind of thing and on a key ring lanyard. Um, this knife has no value and nobody wants it. <laughs> Don't try to sell that stuff. Um, you know, cheap promotional knives. Here's a little Zytel case from West Michigan Auto Auction. It's got, I don't know, somebody's autograph on it. Um, you know, uh, that's not a knife that you sell. It's a knife that you either uh, throw in your glove box, give to your eight year old as a first knife, or <clears throat> You know, give it uh, you know, whatever, but it's not a it's not a knife sale knife. Esoteric knives, those would be like knives that are out of production, or knives that are goofy, or knives that are custom made knives that nobody's heard of and maybe aren't made very well. Those don't sell. Um, what do sell are, are knives that I'd call wheelhouse knives, right? <clears throat> oh, I didn't even put. This is another example of an inexpensive knife that probably isn't worth your while to sell unless you just want to, you know, sort of turn somebody on to a $20 knife for 15 bucks and, you know, pass it along, so to speak. This is a little K-Bar Dozier. One of my first knife review knives ever back in the RB Carnut days. Three of you remember that. <laughs> okay, so wheelhouse knives okay wheelhouse knives and some of them can be inexpensive a mini recon one that'd be a wheelhouse knife not an expensive knife but it's a wheelhouse knife you know your pair of two anything spiderco is a wheelhouse knife it will sell if we price it right okay most bench maids this is a this is the striker knife ship free exclusive in cpmm4 with Blue hourglass standoffs and carbon fiber scales. One of my favorite knives ever. Um, there's a knife, you know, probably didn't sell as well as I thought it would. There may even still be some in stock. It'll sell, but it's not going to sell for 250 bucks, even though it's a limited production exclusive. That's what it costs new. You know, you got to put it on the money. If you can buy this knife new at Knife Ship Free for 250 and they still have some in stock, um, if yours is used, even if it looks really nice, you're probably going to need to price it around 200 bucks, to, you know, to make it attractive for somebody to buy. 
Um, you know, Sabenzas always sell. You gotta put them on the money though. This is my first one ever, my Lefty Plain Jane 21, but you know, this is a $410 knife new. You know, let's say it was right-handed. It's got snail trails. It's It's been sharpened, but the blade is in excellent shape. You know, my edge on it maybe helps the value a little bit. I don't know. But, you know, it's 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 got honest wear. What's that knife worth? It's probably worth, you know, most four or five-year-old Sabenzas are going to look like this, aren't they? Well, it's worth, what, $325, $330, maybe $350 on a good day? Um, fixed blades. Well, you know, wheelhouse fixed blades. Let's say um, Bussies, Essies, uh, Ontario Rat Series fixed blades. The new Bradford Guardians sell really, really well. And, of course, oh, yeah, Bark Rivers sell well. Why do they sell well on my channel? Because you see a lot of them on my channel. My viewers uh, are familiar with them and they've heard good things about them because I've probably reviewed them. Again, you know, be aware of what the knife sold for you, whether it's still available. Um, and, you know, let's put them on the money. Um, okay, that's going to bring us to wheelhouse knives that you really got to think differently about pricing what am i talking about uh-huh great eastern cutlery knives traditionals that are wheelhouse knives and it's not just gec uh case and queen will sell you got to really put those on the money though um and when i said when i say put those case and queen up put case and queen on the money i mean you're going to sell them for 75% of what they cost new if they're nice. GECs are a whole different ballgame. Okay? Um, if, it's a, if it's a GEC pattern that you own that has, was produced a year ago or more and it's still in stock, it will not do um, internet retail street. You're going to have to price it maybe a little more than a case, but... Um, percentage wise but you're not going to sell for double retail if it's a pattern that didn't sell well you know it's going to be 75 percent of its original price then you got the tom's choice barlow and we've had this discussion before this is a uh, new day barlow with the prettiest spade blade ever put in a traditional slip joint and a large pen secondary. You know that that knife was probably 125 new. It's probably today worth 250 to 300. This is the autumn gold jigged bone version of my SFO, the 74 Heartland clip. Um, these right now. The, the jig bone haven't hit the secondary market, but the Ebony's are selling between 150 and 200. <clears throat> Don't short yourself on a, on a high demand, low supply GEC. Or for that matter, you know, if it was a, uh, a CPM M4 Natural G10 Paramilitary 2 that was a sprint run that sold out in about a day. Um, Don't short yourself on that. Do a little research. See what they're selling for. And like I said, I will help you. So how do you get paid? That's a, that's a good question, isn't it? Here's how it normally goes. Let's say I've got a sale of 20 knives in it. Um, 15 of them are going to sell the first night. The, the sales are all on Thursday nights unless something weird happens. Sometime on Friday, I'm going to make a deposit in your PayPal account. Friends or family, so there's no fee to you. For the bulk of the knives that sold. Now over the next week, the, the stragglers, as they sell, I'm just going to pay you as each one sells. Um, so you get your money pretty quickly. I do have a couple consigners that don't have PayPal accounts. And frankly, um, I do them because they're multiple time consigners, but it's really not fun. <clears throat> I'm hanging on to a large sum of money for a week, sometimes two or three weeks if we have no sales that we rerun, that I'm sending them a, a postal money order or, or 
at one time cash in a box, which I really hate because um, it was like three grand. Um, PayPal is almost a must for this kind of sell, this kind of sale, whether you're a seller or a buyer. It's just the it's the way that money moves between people in the internet age. If you don't have a PayPal account, please get one. Um, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Buyers. Um, I, I ship priority mail after receiving a confirmed spendable payment in PayPal. <clears throat> the next business day, sometimes it can be the same day. If you buy a knife in the morning and I go to the post office that afternoon. I ship exclusively priority mail. And once the knife leaves leaves my possession, it's your responsibility. I, I will furnish you if there's a problem with a tracking number. I, I really don't have time to send every buyer tracking numbers. But you know, if it, if it hasn't shown up in a week and we need to find it, I'll be happy to give you the tracking number. But if I'm able to supply you a tracking number, that knife is your baby. Okay. Um, it, that is, you know, one of the risks of buying a buying a knife. It's it's got to go through the mail. Obviously, you know, if I sold a knife for a hundred bucks and made fifteen bucks, I can't afford to pay you a hundred dollars. That that would be insane. Um, all those priority packages are insured for fifty bucks. You are welcome to, as a buyer, to purchase additional insurance on any package uh, that you that I'm sending you. Um, so that's that. Um, let's see, what else should we talk about? Oh, I'm thinking about guys, and there, we actually just had some discussion about this in a sale comment thread. Um, would you guys like to see the sales moved to 9 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock? I don't know if I've asked that out loud. So please comment in this video um, about whether you'd like that. I know that the reason I started doing them at 10 is because so many of the buyers are West Coast folks and you're up later. And so, you know, if I did them at nine, that's six o'clock your time. You might still be eating dinner and stuff. Um, but some of our East Coast folks, man, it gets pretty late. Um, so if you'd like to see that, weigh in in the comments. Or if you'd like to keep it at 10, weigh in in the comments. And I'm flexible. I could go either way. Um, so that's that. I kind of enjoy doing these sales and I don't mind the income. I know that I said when I, when I retired from the car business, I really, really didn't ever want to sell anything again. But then guys started asking, could you sell some knives for me? And, uh, so I, after a while, I just kind of threw up my hands and said, you know what? Buyers like it. They know they're buying a knife that I've looked at, I've spent a little time with. If there are issues with it, I'm going to tell them. If it's a perfect example, they're going to know that. So they're always going to know what they're getting. Um, sellers like it because it's no muss, no fuss. Put a box of knives in the mail, collect money. Um, oh, by the way, before I forget, damaged knives. Okay, damaged knives. Let's say, for instance, I got a pair of military two and... Uh, it's been horribly sharpened and um, you know somebody put it on a belt sander and it's got a round tip and the choils all or the ricasso where the edge meets the ricasso is all jacked up and you know it's got scratches all over the blade and the handle's got chunks out of it that's you know that's not a hundred dollar knife guys and that's a fifty dollar knife you know if, if it's a knife that's got beyond wear into the damage category um, that's going to take either lots of expertise and time to fix or it's just not fixable it's now a beater knife it's worth half what it would be worth if it were a nice used knife i do have one seller um, this is kind of interesting let me find this i was kind of shocked because he he sent me knives for sharpening and he sent me knives to sell in the same shipment, I was very confused because some of the knives he was selling, two of them, he wanted me to sharpen. Here's one of them. This will be in this week's sale. This is a Benchmade Adamas that looks 
to be a perfect example of a new Adamus that I sharpen. Well, yeah, that's what it looks like now. <laughs> Let's just say if we would have tried to sell this knife for, you know, $65, looking like it looked when I got it, nobody would have bought it. Maybe somebody would have bought it for 65 bucks. Now, it's a zero blade play, near free dropping Adamus that can easily be flicked open and closed with perfect blade centering and a gorgeous and perfect 17 degrees per side, the Apostle P edge with a 20 degree micro bevel. Um, it's as nice an Adamus as you can buy. It ain't gonna be 65 bucks, and you know, the seller paid. You know, 25 bucks for a sharpening spot to get it there. Was that worth it? Pretty smart. But you know, damaged knives or severely worn knives, you gotta price them on you gotta price them on the money. Okay. I think that's about it. If you have any more questions, certainly put them in the comments. Um, I will uh, in the description of this video, kind of like I do for the terms of sale, I'll put a you know a boilerplate in the description for for consigners on uh, how we sell knives just so you can read it quickly instead of watching a whole 22 minute video that is all for this one guys grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ and remember the word in all this cutlery are sharp